family and the workers within the family, men, women, and children, were essential to maintain the farming operation. Okay, with this change in birth rate, obviously, the differentiation between men and women tended to increase. Women had additional periods in which they were carrying children, dealing with young children, responsible for upbringing, and it was difficult for them to continue to serve as a major economic supplier for the family, difficult though not always impossible, and men increasingly in most agricultural societies assumed the role of principal cultivator of the crucial food crops. This economic differentiation responsible for patriarchy was fundamental to the agricultural experience and again greatly differentiated it from what had gone before. Childhood, of course, also changed. In hunting and gathering societies, children had had relatively few functions until they reached their early teen years. In agricultural societies, childhood and work became closely associated and the virtues enjoined upon children, including obedience, tended to follow this shift in role as well. Okay, so with the advent of agriculture, even though it occurs at different times in different places, one sees a different kind of human experience emerge, different sets of relationships between different parts of the human community. The advent of agriculture, including its messiness, its uneven adoption and uneven chronology, the advent of agriculture raises some really interesting questions about human progress. The most tempting thing to say, and I think this comes through in a good bit of grade school stuff about uh, basic human history, the most obvious thing to say is, well, with agriculture, human beings were poised for further progress. And in some senses, that may be so. But it's also crucial to recognize that agriculture brought with it a number of very clear liabilities. And a few historians have argued that with agriculture, a downward spiral was established for the human species that we're still engaged in today. I wouldn't press it that far, but it's worth thinking about. What were the drawbacks? Drawback number one, obviously, agriculture introduced new kinds of inequality into the human experience, particularly between men and women. Drawback number two, as human societies began to settle down into clustered communities, uh, disease possibilities increased. So agricultural societies were exposed to more epidemic disease than hunting and gathering peoples were. Agricultural societies also, almost by definition, were capable of altering the local environment in ways that hunting and gathering societies could almost never do. They might have some impact on animal numbers, but fundamental ecological shifts really awaited the advent of agriculture. And in some early agricultural communities, environmental damage actually emerged quite quickly and in some cases actually destroyed the communities involved, at least in that particular region. So it's important to see downsides to agriculture, lest we adopt an unduly rosy, progressive view of human history. And it's important to realize that some of these downsides actually affected the uh, willingness to adopt agriculture itself, which, as I said, was not exactly um, a uniform given in the human response. But agriculture clearly had a few advantages, and this is why it spread. One of its advantages, and one historian has pointed this out not entirely frivolously, was it allowed the emergence of products that could be fermented to create alcohol. And this historian has suggested, I wouldn't press this too far, but it's sort of fun. This historian has suggested that one of the reasons that men were willing to adopt agriculture, despite the fact that it took them away from the hunt, was because, because it allowed them to get bombed. And indeed, we will see early on that some of the first things agricultural societies did, for example, with the introduction of, of writing, was to write down recipes for the fermentation of grain. Okay, more systematically and more seriously, agriculture allowed, as we've already suggested, a significant improvement in food supply that in turn allowed families to have more children, slash probably engage more frequently in sexual activity, and certainly allowed populations to expand. Whereas the population of the world at the eve of agriculture was probably at most 10 million people, 
quite possibly fewer than that. Within a few thousand years, the human population around the world had risen to 100 million or even more, and some of the great agricultural societies would be poised for population figures even in advance of these levels. Agriculture did not produce world populations at the level we're accustomed to today, but they generated populations that were vastly um, larger than had been true in the human condition up to that point. Agricultural societies, agricultural economies, always had some limitations. And as we begin to turn to a long period of human history, between about 9,000 BCE until literally three, 400 years ago, a long period, it's important to remember that these conditions will be true to some degree almost everywhere, except in those cases where agriculture didn't prevail at all. We've already seen some limitations, or at least some characteristics, in terms of gender relationships, relationships between parents and children, okay? As agricultural families move to birth levels that would usually involve a desire for between five and seven children born for a family, right? Agricultural economies also always were constrained by limitations in the amount of food that a given agricultural worker could generate. Except in a very few hothouse regions, even the most advanced agricultural economies, even 500 years ago, as recently as 500 years ago, uh, required about eight agricultural workers for every 10 people in the population. In other words, agricultural economies, although they greatly facilitated food supply, were always constrained by the extent to which 80% or more of the population had to be engaged primarily in agriculture. And this is important to remember. It's a constraint even on societies whose achievements we will soon marvel at. A constraint because it limited the, the amount of taxation that could be levied. It limited the size of cities to 20% of the population at the most and frequently less than that. Uh, Russian agricultural society, for example, uh, only only uh, in quite modern times generated an urban level that was more than 10% of the population. This constraint of resources, this constraint in terms of growing patterns, is a crucial feature to remember about agricultural societies generally. Agricultural societies was all, would also, understandably enough, generate some cultural emphases. I think it's probably forcing it to say agriculture immediately produced an appropriate cultural response because polytheistic systems that had been developed in hunting and gathering societies continued into agricultural societies for a considerable period of time. But obviously over time, agriculture would encourage new attention to the spring season as the planting season, new attention to divine forces responsible for creativity, so you need to look, along with resource constraints and family patterns, one needs to look to agriculture as a set of cultural parameters as well. And that will crop up in our later discussions also. The crucial feature of agriculture, along with the drawbacks that have to be remembered, the crucial feature of agriculture was its capacity to lead to population increase and its capacity to generate not massive, but discernible surpluses, which could be used for purposes other than agriculture itself. Agriculture indeed imposed some needs for some people who could be at least partially freed from agriculture proper in order to do some other things. Most obviously, for example, uh, agricultural societies depended on the development of manufacturing of certain kinds of containers that could hold food and seed from one season to the next. So not surprisingly, although this isn't immediate, one of the first areas where agricultural societies generated technological events was in the area of pottery making because you needed these things simply to maintain your agricultural economy. So without overdoing the progressive emphasis, because again the drawbacks have to be remembered, agriculture is involved with population growth, the generation of surpluses, and this could lead and this is our point in the next session. This could lead to yet additional developments in the human experience, including cities, including other kinds of technology.